Good afternoon, everyone. This is Father Dan today, a poetry reading session by Pima Past President. The Rock Cries Out Today, excerpts by Maya Angelou. A rock, a river, a tree. Today, the rock cries out to us clearly, forcefully. Come, you may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny. The rock cries out today, you may stand on me, but do not hide your face. Across the wall of the world, a river sings a beautiful song. Come, rest here by my side. Your arms struggle for profit have left colors of waste upon my shore, currents of debris upon my breast. Yet today I call you to my riverside, if you will study war no more. Come, clad in peace, and I will sing the songs the Creator gave to me when I and the tree and the stone were one. Before cynicism was a bloody seer across your brow, and when yet you knew, you still knew nothing. Here, root yourselves beside me. 
I am the tree planted by the river. Lift up your faces. We have a piercing need for this bright morning turning for you. History, despite its trancing pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Lift up your eyes upon the day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream, women, children, men. Take it into the palms of your hands. Mold it into the shape of your most private need. Sculpt it into the image of your most public self. Lift up your hearts. Each new hour holds new beginnings, new chances for new beginnings. Do not be wedded forever to fear, yoked eternally to brutishness. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change here on the pulse of this fine day. You may have the courage to look up and out upon me, the rock, the river, the tree, your country. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the courage, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes, into your brother's face, your country, and say simply, very simply, with hope. Good morning. Good afternoon, fellow team mappers, fellow people managers, everyone who's watching us this afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. The poem I, was, I just read was written by one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou. It was a poem written specially and specifically uh, and was performed at the inauguration uh, of President Bill Clinton of the United States of America. There are 15 of us, team of presidents, with you this afternoon. Um, here we are. Uh, you will get to meet them in a while. Um, we will be reading poems that we personally select. Grace, Grace. Yes. We'll be reading points that we personally selected. Um, we'd like to um, note, however, that we do not own the copyright to any of the poems that we will read this afternoon. Um, the copyright will con continues to belong to the authors, the trusts, the companies that own them. Uh, the music that we're using is also copyright free. No copyright infringement is intended by PIMAP. To say that we live today in different and difficult times is a major understatement. The, state, the situation that we face today is unprecedented, meaning it has not happened in the past. It's confusing, it's depressing, and worse, perhaps uncertain. But it has been said that the hardest of times often lead to the greatest moments of triumph. The words of Albert Camus. It is in the depth of winter that we discover that within each one of us lies an invincible summer. In the midst of all the uncertainties, we can take comfort in some things that continue to remain certain. The beauty of life, the constancy of values, the wonders of human expression. So today, allow us, past presidents of the People Management Association of the Philippines, to comfort you entertain you, perhaps even inspire you as we recite a collection of poetry that we have put together for your application and enjoyment. So why poetry? Because poetry is the language of the heart and the mind. Because poetry is the best manifestation of combined thought and feeling. In real life, we breathe in experience, but we breathe out poetry. And poetry exists in everything. There is poetry in our lives, the laughter of a child, in the way we sit and stare at a loved one, although we often fail to notice it. Poetry are thoughts that breathe and words that burn. And poetry also heals the wounds inflicted by reason. Poetry should remind us of beauty of life and the beauty of life. Our program this afternoon will be divided into three acts. 
representing three of the most universal values and aspirations. Faith, hope, and love. The first act is on faith. Faith, as we know, is the light from within ourselves that guide us through even the darkest of times. We will be reading poetry that will enable us to see light with our hearts, particularly at a time when clouds of darkness loom. These are works that connect us to what we truly believe in, because only when our faith is bigger than our fears can we truly overcome. We will be joined in this first act by Sami Coloma, Pima president in 1988, Chip Ventura, president of Pima in 1993, Ed Soriano, Pima president in 1995, Barbie Atienza, president in 1998, and Obert Policarpio, president in 2015. My name is Bong Ostero. I was president of Pima in 2011. The first four poems are works that pay homage and reverence to our creator in different ways. The first is Psalm 23, also known as the Lord is my shepherd. Perhaps one of the most popular psalms in the holy book. This will be read by San Nicoloma. This will be followed by the prayer by Max Ehrman. Some of you may know him as the author of the Desiderata. This poem by Barbie Atienza. Chip Ventura will, now, will next read Christina Rossetti's reflective poetry about her struggles to be closer to God. The piece is entitled Good Friday. And finally, for this collection, excerpts from God of the Open Air by Henry Van Dyke to be read by Ed Soriano. Mga kaibigan, here are Sunny Barbie. <laughs> Shit and Ed. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A prayer by Max Ehrman. Let me do my work each day, and if the darkened hours of despair overcome me, may I not forget the strength that comforted me in the desolation of other times. May I still remember the bright hours that found me walking over the set hills of my childhood, or dreaming on the margin of the quiet river when a light glowed within me. And I promised my early God to have courage amid the tempests of the changing years. Spare me from bitterness and from the sharp passions of unguarded moments. May I not forget that poverty and riches are of the spirit. Though the world know me not, may my thoughts and actions be such as shall keep friendly with myself. Lift my eyes from the heart and let me not forget the uses of the stars. Forbid that I should judge others, lest I condemn myself. Let me, follow, let me not follow the clamor of the world, but walk calmly in my path. 
Give me a few friends who will love me for what I am and keep ever burning before my frequent steps the kindly light of hope. And though age and infirmity overtake me and I come not within the sight of the castle of my dreams, teach me still to be thankful for life and for time's olden memories that are good and sweet. And may evening's twilight find me gentle still. Good Friday by Christina Rossetti. Am I a stone and not a ship? That I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross. To number drop by drop thy blood's slow loss. And yet not weep. Not so those women loved who with exceeding grief lamented thee. Not so fallen Peter, weeping bitterly. Not so the thief was moved. Not so the sun and moon which hid their faces in a starless sky. A horror of great darkness at broad noon. I, only I. Yet give, give not her, but seek thy ship. True shepherd of the flock. Greater than Moses. Turn and look once more and smite a rock. Thou who hast made thy dwelling fair with flowers beneath, above with starry nights, and yet they altar everywhere, on mountain heights, in woodlands dim with many a dream, and in valleys bright with springs. And on the curving caves of every stream, thou who hast taken to thyself the wings of morning to abide upon the secret places of the sea and on far islands, where the tide visits the beauty of untrodden shores, waiting for worshipers to come to thee in thy great out of doors. To thee I turn, to thee I make my prayer, God of the open air. By the faith that the flowers show when they bloom unbidden, by the calm of the river's flow to a goal that is hidden, by the trust of the tree that clings to its deep foundation, by the courage of wild birds' wings and the long migration. Wonderful secret of peace that abides in nature's breast. Teach me how to confide and live my life and rest. For the comforting warmth of the sun that my body embraces, for the cool of the waters that run through the shadowy places, for the balm of the breezes that brush my face with their fingers, for the vesper hymn of the thrush when the twilight lingers, for the long breath, the deep breath, the breath of a heart without care. I will give thee thanks and adore thee, God of the open air. Each generation makes a contribution to poetry. One of the current generation's contribution to poetry is a spoken word. Performance art, which focuses on the aesthetics of wordplay, such as intonation and voice inflection, as popularized by the likes of Juan Miguel Severo. To perform a piece he himself wrote entitled Aming Tula, here is the ever youthful and forever young Obed Olicario. Mm. 
maraming tula na kinapapalooban ng pag-ibig, pasasalamat at pagpuri. May tula na patungkol sa kasayahan, malasakit, tiwala at iba pang dahilan. Na may tauspusong patunay ng pagmamahal na nasamahan sa mga tao na nagdaan. Alay ko ang tula na sadyang nilikha para sa inyo. Eto na, aming tula. Mga kong kaibigan, ituloy natin dahil masaya iya yan. Sangayan ako na ikaw at ako ay tutula para sa mamamayanan. Upang gunitain ang pagmamahal at paggalang sa ating inang bayan. Ang aming tula ay naalay ang aming pag-ibig na walang hanggan upang maibsan ang kalungkutan at hindi humimlay ang tipa na nating makulay. Ang aming tula ay kahali-halina at bigkasin upang maiwasan na maging tulala tuwing sasapit ang pagsubok ng buhay. Ang aming tula ay pinagkakalob sa inyong lahat na walang alinlangan na mag-aalay sa inyong minumutsang buhay na may malasakit at tapang na suungin ang panganib upang sumagip ng mga buhay na hindi alintana ang mga pangungutya. Kagyat kayong tumutugon sa mga nangangailangan ng lunas at kalinga, handang tiisin ang pagod at sa idong pagkauhaw hindi sa tubig, bagkos makapiling araw-araw ang mga minamahal sa buhay, lalo na kung sila ay pukawin ng kaba, takot, pagalala, karamdaman o sakuna. Sa oras na wala sila sa piling niya. Ang aming tula, bibig kasi ng hibla ng bawat salita na nag-uumapan ng pagmamahal at malasakit para sa bawat isa na may nararamdaman sakit, sakit na dulot ng kalungkutan, kagutuman, karamutan, kawalan, at walang kasiguruhan. Ang aming tula, ay muling pasisilayin ang liwanag ng tala sa tingkad ng kulay no alang tahimik ay may hatid na galak at ngiting may laya kawangis ang pag-asa at ligaya na pinagkaloob sa tatlong hari pasaksihan ang pagsilang ng dakilang sanggol na nagpatunay na kanyang walang hanggang pagmamahal para sa iyo sa akin at sa lahat ito ang masidhing dahilan na nagpabanal ng buhay. Sino ba na walang karapatan na pusin ang yugto ng buhay? Hindi ba tayan kung ano man ang kasarinlan, matanda o bata, mayaman o dukha, mapagkawang gawa o magnanakaw, mapagbigay o sakim, malakas o mahina. Ang pagtikis ng buhay at ipagkait ang matiwasay at marangal na pamumuhay ay matinding paglabag sa karapatan ng sangkatauhan. Madaling maging tao, ngunit mas malaga ang maging magpakatao. Maging magalang kanino man upang maging kagalang-galang din. Maging maunawain upang siya ay unawain. Maging matapat, matino, pagbigay, parispeto at magpatawad. Ang pinakamahalaga ay mahilin ang kapwa kagaya ng pagmamahal sa sarili. Ibigin ang tapat ng Diyos ng higit sa lahat. Ito ang pinakamahalagang dalawang utos ng Panginoong Heso Kristo na nagkatawang tao at ipadama ang dakilong pagmamahal ng Diyos Ama. Tinanggap niya ang mga kalabisan at matinding pag-alipusta, hagupit, at samot saring pagpahirap kahit wala siyang kasalanan at pagkukulang. Inalay ang kanyang buhay sa pagbayubay sa krus para sa ating kaligtasan. Manalig tayo lagi sa kanya, huwag manghina ang kalooban at mawalan ng kamalayan. Bawat pagsapit ng takip silim ay walang humpay niyang papawin ang lungkot at pait. Sa kada sikat ng araw ay may kalakip na bagong pag-asa at panimula. Hindi siya mananawa na ipadama kung gano'n tayo kahalaga sa kanya. 
wala nang higit pa sa pagmamahal mo o Diyos ko. Pagbubutihin ko ang aking pakipagkapwa-tao na tanda ng tunay ng pag-ibig ko sa iyo. Tagat na aking ipadama sa kanila ang nag-uumapaw mong pag-ibig. Aming tula. Tula ng harana ng aming puso. Tula ng pagmamahal para sa inyo. Tula ng biyaya dahil magkadaupang palad tayo. Tula ng pasasalamat at pagdiriwang dahil tayo ay buhay. Ito ay tula ng katatagan ng ating pananampalataya at tiwala sa Diyos Ama. Diyos na anak at Diyos ang banal na Espiritu. Ang aming tula ay may kalakip na panalangin para sa ating katatagan, kaligayahan, kasaganahan, kapayapaan at kaligtasan. Ikaw at ako at tayo ay magkakapatid dahil tayo ay Pilipino. Ito ang aming tula para sa inyo, inambayan at Diyos na pag-ibig. Maraming salamat, Obed Polikarpio. The next two poems celebrate faith and courage. Courage, they say, isn't the absence of fear, but rather the abundance of faith. These are works that many of us are familiar with. The first one is If by Rudyard Kipling, and the second one, Don't Quit by Alice Zimmerman. There are many versions of the poem Don't Quit. What we will read today is the version of Alice Zimmerman. Hello, Pimapers. Here are Chit Ventura and Barbie Atienza. If by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. but make allowance for their doubting too. You can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things you gave your life to, broken. And stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sign you to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, Hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither false nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Don't Quit by Alice N. Z. Zimmerman. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill. When funds are low and the debts are high. And you want to smile but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. 
Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when we might have won had we stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to be a faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the winner's cup. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver lining of the clouds of doubts. And you can never tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. For we know the Father above looks down. He sees our struggles and holds a crown. He knows the way, though it's rough and drear. He will give strength so we need not fear. He offers to you the refreshing cup of the water of life that in faith look up. Continue on till the crown is won, which he will give when our work is done. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was perhaps America's most popular poet. Any poetry reading session would be incomplete without his most famous poem, A Psalm of Life, from which we drew the title of this afternoon's poetry reading session, Farther Than Today. Here then are two of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poems, considered by many as counterpart poems. Here are Sani Coloma and Ed Soriano. These are A Sum of Life and The Builders. Hmm. A Sum of Life by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real. Life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. Thus thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow finds us farther than today. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still, like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however pleasant. Let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present. Heart within and God overhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And, departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing o'er life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate, Still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. The Builders by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow 
We are all architects of fate, working in these walls of time. Some with massive deeds and great, some with ornaments of rhyme. Nothing useless is or low. Each thing in its place is best. And what seems but idle show strengthens and supports the rest. For the structure that we raise, time is with materials filled. Our todays and yesterdays are the blocks which we build. Truly shape and fashion this, leave no yawning gaps between. Think not, because no man sees, such things will remain unseen. Let us do our work as well, both the unseen and the seen. Make the house where the gods may dwell, beautiful, entire, and clean. Else our lives are incomplete, standing in these walls of time, broken stairways where the feet stumble as they seek to climb. Build today then, strong and sure, with a firm and ample base, and ascending and secure shall tomorrow find its place. Thus alone can we attain to those turrets where the eyes is the world as one vast plain and one boundless reach of sky. There are a number of celebrated Asian poets. One of them is Rabindranath Tagore. The first non-European to be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. He was an Indian poet, painter, and nationalist. We end Act One with a reading of one of his more famous works. This is Give Me Strength. This is my prayer to thee, my Lord. Strike, strike at the root of penury in my heart. Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. Give me the strength never to own the poor or bend my knees before insolent might. Give me the strength to raise my mind high above daily travels. And give me the strength to surrender my strength to thy will, who is love. That poem brought Act One to a close. We now come to Act 2 of our poetry reading session this afternoon, which is on love. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once said that of all the passions known to man, love is probably the strongest because it attacks the mind, the heart, and the senses simultaneously. To love and be loved is probably one of the most important sources of happiness. So much has been written, said, and done all in the name of love. Empires have risen and burned down. Wars have been fought. Peace have been conquered. all in the name of love. In Act 2, we shall explore the many nuances and manifestations of love. In this, set, in this act, I will be joined by four other PIMAP presidents. Pilar Almira, president of PIMAP in 1996. Grace Abelia Zata, President of PIMAP in 2009. Grace Sorongon, 
president in 2013, and Josefo Semenes, president of TMAP in 2014. Act two will begin with a poem that speaks about the depth and breadth and length that love can be measured. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's How Do I Love Thee to be read by Pilar Almira. This will be followed by a reading of Benjamin Aliri Science to the Desert, a poem about love and yearning for Jesus Christ. And finally, William Shakespeare's most famous sonnet, Sonnet 116, Let Me Not to the Marriage of Two Minds, to be read by Grace Soronad. How Do I Love Thee? By Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. My soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose. With my lost saints, I love thee with a breath. Smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. To the Desert by Benjamin Aziris Sainz. I came to you one rainless August night. You taught me how to live without the rain. You are thirst and thirst is all I know. You are sand, wind, sun, and burning sky, the hottest blue. You blow a breeze and brand your breath into my mouth. You reach, then bend. You're forced to break, blow, burn, and make me new. You wrap your name tight around my ribs and keep me warm. I was born for you, above, below, by you, by you surrounded. I wake to you at dawn, never break or not, to reach, rise, low, salvame, mi Dios, sagame, mi tierra, salva, traga, break me, I am bread, I will be the water to your thirst. Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. Let me not, to the marriage of true minds, admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when its alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mind that looks on something and is never shaken. It is the spare to every wandering buck whose words are known, although his height be taken. Love's not fine school, the rosy lips and cheeks. Within his bending sickle's compass come. Love utters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out, even to the edge. Of thee. If this bearer and upon me proved, I never read, nor a man, no man ever loved. The question of equality between man and woman, between husband and wife, or between couples of any gender is always a sensitive topic. But poets, philosophers, writers, have all tried to widen the contours of the discussion in many ways. The French poet and novelist Victor Hugo, a lame measure of fame, wrote a poem entitled, A Man and a Woman. This will be read by Grace Abelia Zata. 
On the other hand, Lebanese American philosopher and poet Khalil Gibran gave advice on how to have a lasting marriage in a poem entitled On Marriage. This will be read by Joseph Osmanis. Friends, here are Grace Abel Yasata and Joseph Osmanis. A Man and a Woman by Victor Hugo. Man is the most elevated of creatures, woman the most sublime of ideals. God made for man a throne, for woman an altar. The throne exalts the altar and life. Man is the brain, woman the heart. The brain creates life, the heart generates love. Light engenders, but love resurrects. Because of reason, man is strong. Because of fear, woman is invincible. Reason is convincing, but tears are moving. Man is capable of heroism, woman martyrdom. Heroism enables martyrdom and noble. Man has supremacy, woman has preference. Supremacy is strength, preference is the right. Man is a genius, woman an angel. Genius is immeasurable, the angel undefinable. The aspiration of man is supreme glory. The aspiration of woman is extreme virtue. God, glory creates all that is great, virtue, all that is divine. Man is a code, woman, a gospel. A code corrects, the gospel perfects. Man thinks, woman dreams. To think is to have a worm in the brain. To dream is to have a halo on the brow. Man is an ocean woman, a lake. The ocean has the adorning pearl. The lake has its dazzling poetry. Man is the eagle that soars. Woman is the nightingale that sings. To fly is to dominate space. To sing is to conquer the soul. Man is a temple. Woman, a shrine. Before the temple, we discover ourselves. Before the shrine, we kneel. In short, man is found where earth finishes. Woman, where heaven begins. <clears throat> On Marriage by Khalil Gibran. Then Almira spoke again and said, And what of marriage, master? And he answered him, saying, You were born together, and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together with the white wings of death, scatter your days. But let there be spaces in your togetherness. And let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it not, let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your shores. Fill each other's cup. But drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but not from the same loaf. Give one, sing and dance together and be joyous, but let's, let each one of you be alone. 
even as the strings of the lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your heart, but not into its other's keeping. For only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress grew not its other shadow. We Filipinos love to banter playfully. We have art forms such as the balagtasan that features a lively and oftentimes rowdy the dialogue between two sides of an issue. The next set of poems, referred to as pastoral lyrics, feature one of the earlier dialogues about love. The first one is The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe. A rebuttal was written by Sir Walter Raleigh a year after, titled A Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd. Friends, please welcome Grace Ron and myself. The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe. Come live with me and be my love, and we'll all the pleasures prove that hills and valleys, dales and fields, woods the steepy mountain yields. And we will sit upon the rocks, seeing the shepherds feed their flocks by shallow rivers to whose falls the largest birds sing by their gulls. And I will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant posies, a cup of flowers and a kirtle embroidered all with leaves of myrtle. A gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lambs we pull, fur, skin, fur lined slippers for the cold, with buckles of the purest gold, a belt of straw and ivy buds, with coral clasps and amber studs, and if these pleasures may they move, come live with me and be my love. The shepherd swains shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning. If this delight thy mind may move, then live with me and be my love. The Nymphs Reply to the Shepherd by Sir Walter Raleigh. If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might be moved to live with thee and be my love. Fine drives the flocks from field to fold, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold. And Philomel became dumb. The rest complains of cares to come. The flowers do fade and wanton fields. The wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall. It's fancy spring, but sorrows fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, thy cup, thy kirtle, and thy poses, soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, in folly ripe, in ransom rotten. Thy belts of straw and ivy buds, thy coral clocks and amber studs, all these in me, no means can move to come to thee and be thy love. But could youth last love and love still, still breathe? A joy, a joy is no day, nor age, no need. Then this delights my mind might move to live with thee and be thy love. The next three forms are in three Philippine languages. The first one in Waray, which is my language. The second one is in Visaya, Visaya or Cebuano. And the third one in Tagalog. 
Dinumdum ko ikaw, in English, I think of you, is a poem written by, by the foremost poet of the islands of Leyte and Samar, Illuminado Lucente. This poem was made into a song. This will be read by Grace Abelia Sata, who is not waray, but married to one. Gugma Batok Bitok, which roughly translates to love versus COVID. It's a poem that celebrates love in the time of COVID, while at the same time paying homage to the Cebuano language. It will be read by Josefa Jimenez, who is proudly Cebuano from Cebu. And finally, a poem written by God Andres Bonifacio that galvanized support for the Katipunan, perhaps a very appropriate poem to the times that we live in. Dugo at pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa to be read by Pilar Almira. Here are Dinumdum Ko Ikaw, Gugma, Batok Bitok, Pog, Tugo at Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa. Dinumdum Ko Ikaw by Illuminado Lustente. Kung harapit na ang adlaw matunod, ngan haimo hirayo ako, naputok ang kakulba hadughan, ngan kamingaw asay god kadako. Pagpitang han panuro han tunog, kabukad ng dahon panhumog, sinindoha daw burabod, waray hunong pinpagtubod. Kung nadangat na ang gabi, nadugang ang kamingaw. Labi, kung nabatian ko, paghuni hankalaw, pagpula ang kidlangan, panpunias ang adlaw. Pagkalpad ang maya, dinumdum ko ikaw. Nainok ko ang imagi nga adlaw, inhimaya nga hingpit gayod, labi, ikaw ang upod ko pagtanap, han kapusak, han mga balod, kundi iday, nadugang ang kasamdon, ngan ang lipay, nangingi iba, ha, kahulop, nga ang akon pagtaong, ibaligya mo na iba. Salit, pagsalidsid, han mapawa nga adlaw, Kahigtas nga mga bukid, takop ang kasilap. Panhuni han gangis, upod ang kamingaw. Duyog han panangis, kindumdum ko ikaw. <coughs> Gugma batok kubit. Sinulat ng inyong ubos na sulugoon. Binilanggo, yan, hindi yan ang first, that's not the first. Buot ko untang hagkan ang pisngi sa imong langit. Bisan pag ang kaanyag, gitikyupan sa kangitngit. Buot ko ganing gakson ang imong mga panganod. Bisan kining COVID, buot akong ipaan. Kung saan ko paglipay, kining subo kong kasing-kasing. Kung gimanduan man sa social distancing. Kung saan ko paghatod sa gugma kong timos. Kung ang corona sa kaanyag mo'y naggumos. Binilanggo ako sa rihas sa kamingaw o pagbasol, ginapos sa kadina ng virus sa kaduol. Dili makalihok, hinikawan sa paglaob, dili makahilap, mga bakho giloom. Gamhanan man ang tao ng garbusong kalibutan, dungganon pahandianon, apan karon sinilutan. Huwag gahom, huwag bahandi. Huwag kaligon, huwag kusog. 
sinakitan sa karbo, kagawasan o dungog. Bugmang, bugmang ginapos, nagpangawhat sa panganod, kay hapit na matapos. Kining COVID, kining corona, nag-umum o kilom-kilom, kinabuhi buot agaon, kahayag pikyupan sa dulong. Apan ang gugma musukol sa tanang pagsulay. Muasdang makigbatok sa bangis nga kaaway. Gamhanan ang gugma, walang sarang makababag, mupatig babaw bisan ang kubit buot mulubag. Mahanaw man ang pagtuo, bisag mahurot ang paglaong, mapalong man ang kahayag, mutindog sa dulong, mabugto ang gininhawa, malugti ang kinabuhi, kininggugma maligon, maligon pa sa ulising nga gahi. Mawag ang bahante ang tanang gahom mga hanaw, bisan brilyante bulawan mga tunaw. Gugma makanunayon, mapabiling malungtaron, walay COVID, walay corona, walay quarantina, walay lockdown. Dugo at pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa ni Andres Bonifacio. Aling pag-ibig pa ang hihigit kaya sa pagkadalisay at pagkadakila? Gaya ng pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa, aling pag-ibig pa? Wala na nga, wala. Walang mahalagang hindi inihandog ng may pusong wagas sa bayang nagkupkop, dugo, yaman, dunong, katiis at pagod, buhay may abuting, magkalagot-lagot. Ang nakaraang panahon ng aliw, ang inaasahang araw na darating, ng pagkatimawa ng mga alipin, Libang pa ba sa bayan saan tatanghalin? Sa aba ng abang mawalay sa bayan. Guniti magunata may laging sakbibi ng lumbay. Walang alaalat inaasam-asam kundi ang makitang lupang tinubuan. Kayong nalagasan ng bungat bulaklak Kahoy niyaring buhay na nilantat sukat ng balabalakit makapal na hirap. Muling manariwat sa bayay lumiyag. Ipakahandog-handog ang buong pagibig hanggang sa may dugong ubusing itigis. Kung sa pagtatanggol, buhay ang kapalit, ito'y kapalaran at tunay na langit. Aling pag-ibig pa ang hihigit kaya sa pagkadalisay at pagkadakila gaya ng pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa. Aling pag-ibig pa wala na nga wala gaya ng pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa. Aling pag-ibig pa wala na wala na nga, wala. A rapper and a loved one were still children. Let me repeat that. We close Act 2 with an iconic work by Edgar Allan Poe. It tells the story of a great love that started when the narrator and her loved one were still children. In a kingdom by the sea, but the love with a love that was more than love. Friends, here are Pilar, Josephus, Grace, Grace Sata, Grace Roman, with Annabelle Lee. 
it was a many, a many year ago in this kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child, in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee. With a love that the wind syrups of heaven laughed loud at her and me. And this is the reason that long, long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud one night, chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee. So that a highborn kingsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went laughing at her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in the kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the laughter in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the right night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride. In her sepulcher, there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Thank you very much, Pilar, Grace Abelia Zata, Grace Rongon, and Josefa Semenis. We now open Act 3 of our session this afternoon, Wishes and Hope. We will be joined in this act by Michelle Garcia, President in 2018, Freddy Marquez, President in 2001, Rene Hener, President in 2000, Jesse Ribostilio, President in 2016, and Mon Segismundo, President in 2017. Act 3, which is also the last act of our poetry reading session this afternoon, is on hope. This is a question that's most often asked, what is hope? Well, hope is everything. Samuel Johnson once said that the natural flights of the human mind are not from pleasure to pleasure, but rather from one hope to the next hope, to the next hope. In this act, we will read poems that showcase the power of hope. Because hope is more powerful than fear. Because once we choose hope, everything else becomes possible. What then is hope? One way to answer that is by reading Emily Dickinson. She said, well, Hope is the thing with feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash that little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. The first three poems in this act set the context of the human experience. We will begin with the seven ages of man from Shakespeare's comedy, As You Like It, to be read by Mon Segismundo. This will be followed by What Life Should Be by Pat Fleming, to be read by René Henner. And finally, for this uh, segment, Do Not Go Gentle Into the Quiet Night by Dylan Thomas, to be read by Freddie Marquez. Here are Mon, Fredne, and Freddie. 
Satan by William Shakespeare. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with his seashell and shining morning face, crippling like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, <coughs> with a woeful ballad made to his mistress' eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and birded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round alley, with good cap on lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise sauce and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The six age ships into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. He should pull hose, well save a world too wide for his trunk shank. His big manly boys turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in his song. Last scene of all, against this strange eventful history, his second childishness and near oblivion, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans stays, and sans everything. What Life Should Be by Pat Fleming To learn while still a child what this life is meant to be. To know it goes beyond myself. It's so much more than me. To overcome the tragedies. To survive the hardest times. To face those moments filled with pain and still manage to be kind. To fight for those who can't themselves, to always share my life with those who wander in the dark, to love with all my might. To still stand up with courage, though standing on my own, to still get up and face each day even when I feel alone. To try to understand the one that no one cares to know and make them feel some value when the world has let them go. To be an anchor, strong and true, that person loyal to the end. To be constant source of hope to my family and friends. To live a life of decency, to share my heart and soul, to always say I'm sorry when I've harmed both friend and foe. To be proud of whom I've tried to be and this life I chose to live, to make the most of every day by giving all I have to be. To me, that's what life should be. To me, that's what it's for. To take what God has given me and make me so much more. To live a life that matters. To be someone of great worth. To love and be loved in return and make my mark on earth.
Do not go gentle into that good night by Dylan Thomas. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end no dark is right, because their words head forth no lightning day, do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the, su the sun in flight and learned too late, they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on that sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Their lives are a result of the three C's, choices, chances, and changes. The choices we make in life define the chances we get, and eventually the changes that we make in life. The next two poems are about taking that road less taken. The first one is by Robert Frost, entitled The Road Not Taken. This will be read by Jesse Ribustilio. A rejoinder to this piece was written by Jeff Bressy, entitled The Mentor. This will be read by Michelle Garcia. Mga kaibigan, nandito po si Jesse at si Michelle. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, it leaves no step had trodden block. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverge in a word, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The Mentor by Jeff Bressy. I paused to stand and watch a man who had come to the road's divide. My wonder soared as I watched his stare slowly shift from side to side. 
He stood as if noticing that many passed him by. They moved without a second glance down the road most traveled by. Then as I watched, he stepped full stride towards the path of lesser wear. And soon he vanished from my view round a bend into a snare. I soon, like him, stood center road, faced with that daunting choice. My gaze down his road, causing fear, I quenched my inner voice. For miles I walked the crowded road, breathing dust from others' feet. Until in despair, I stopped and stood, my heart and soul deplete. I gazed about, still holding hope, the other path I'd see. On yonder hill, I saw him there, the man who mentored me. The path between us, steep and rough, and forged with dangers there. Yet still I left my path of friends, ignoring their bewares. I pressed through hardship, pain and fear, over rocks jagged and bent. In time I crashed, lived on that path, my every resource spent. But then a warming touch I felt, a friendly voice I heard. It said, get up and thread this path. I rose without a word. And as I looked, I saw him there. He continued on his way. His only words as he walked on, you're on path, now stay. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I chose in air. But looking back, perhaps as well, all memories now seem fair. Much time I spent on the beaten path, and what I learned immense. But I reached at last the other path, and it has still made all of the difference. Thank you, Michelle and Jesse. The next five poems, which also are the last set of poems for this afternoon, and after that, we will start to wrap up. The next set of poems are all about giving space to our hopes and aspirations, and about having the courage to choose hope over fear. Let me repeat that because I feel it's very important. It's always our choice to choose hope over fear. The five poems are Just Like a Child by Abipola Alabi, to be read by Freddy Marquez. The second one is Tomorrow's Unrevealed Blessings by Luvinia Duncan, to be read by Mon Sigismundo. The Hope Downstream by Jan Rains, to be read by Michelle Garcia. Inner Strength by Jan Reed, to be read by Jesse Bustilia. And finally, the classic Invictus by William Ernest Henley, to be read by Rene Heller. Just Like a Child by Abimbola Alabi. How I wish to trust in life, no questions asked, hanging on God's words, confident and relaxed just like a child. How I long for conscience, as mild as a breeze, having goodwill with others, and always at peace, just like a child. How I long for courage that laughs at fear, knowing I surely be caught when tossed in the air, just like a child. How I wish to take life's journey with ease, jolly through thick and thin, as cool as you please, just like a child. How I need this grace, so dear Lord, to you I come. Help me to believe and receive your kingdom, just like a child. Build blessings by Lubinia Duncan. Although you can't see your way today, tomorrow holds unrevealed blessings that you don't know about. So does the next day and the next. Never judge the situation by the appearance, but by the creator who has your best interests at heart. God knows where you are in life. He knew it before the foundation of the world. 
and he has already made a way to survive what you are going through right now. Just believe. Do what you can and let him do the rest. Relax and stop worrying. God is still in control. And he is working it out for you. Tomorrow holds unrevealed blessings that are about to unfold in your life. You will see. The Hope Down Shim by John Rains. Travelers in the sea of life, being guided by worry and strife, floating <coughs> through their lives toward desperate straits, drifting aimlessly towards whatever awaits are tossed about on stormy waves, awaiting departure to bottomless graves. Oh, if only we could leave this ship and loosen the change and its horrible grip of the burdens and sorrows that come with our plight that's as deep as the ocean and dark as the night. Who, if any, can save us now? What can take hold on this vessel and take turn its bow? I hear the waves crashing from side to side no place to run to, no place to hide. From the fate that lies before us and the turbulent wake behind, these conditions are causing me to lose my mind. I hear my heart pounding like an orchestra's drum. My fears have a power I can't escape from. Lost, tossed, battered and beaten, I lowered my head and prayed for a beacon. A small light in the night, something to guide, this floundering wreck towards calmer seas. Dry land or a speck of hope in a place where hardly is found a glimmer of peace, only happiness drowned. But wait, can it be? Is that the lamp of a lighthouse I see flickering dimly on this churning water? Could we actually break free from certain slaughter? I look closely at the dim deep light, shining like a small diamond in this hellish night. I had almost given up without a fight, given it to the fears of the troubles that might take away my peace and end my life, cut apart my soul as though with a knife, and bury my hope in darkness and doubt, sending me into a spiraling spiritual blackout. Lord, help me remember when all seems lost, when my ship is battered, shattered, and tossed, to look for a light in the stormy sea and hold tightly to whatever it might be. In the distance, as small as it may seem, and never let go of the hope downstream. Inner Strength by John Reed. It's only through mistakes we make. We learn where we went wrong. It's only when we are far from home, we realize where we belong. It's only when we close our eyes, our dreams seem clear and bright. It's only in our darkest hours, we truly see the light. It's only when we lose our way, we pray to the stars above. It's only through times of grief, we learn the true meaning of love. It's only when all hopes seems lost, and our weary journey seems so far, when all the world's against you, we learn how strong we really are. All things are sent to us. We must strive to give our best. I believe God is watching over us and he guides us in our quest. Invictus by William 
Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, black as the peach from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell flats of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloodied, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The captains of our souls. There is something about the human spirit that guarantees that we will survive and prevail. There is a tiny but brilliant light in the hearts of men that will never go out no matter how dark the world becomes. That light is called hope. For as long as we have the capability to hope that tomorrow will be a better day, we will all be okay. We can all hope that tomorrow will find all of us farther than today. We just need to believe in our God, in ourselves, and in each other. We need to keep the faith because, as the Sederata says, despite the sham and the drudgery and the broken dreams, it still is a beautiful world to live in. For our last poem, we will read Max Ehrman's The Desiderata. <clears throat> Go placidly amid the noise and the hill, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others even to the dull and the ignorant, because they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. <clears throat> Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real position in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs. For the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many tears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond the wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have the right to be here 
And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt, the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its charm, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Try to be happy. On behalf of all the team of presidents who joined us this afternoon, all 15 of us, I'd like to say thank you to everyone of you who joined us in Zoom and the people who joined us in YouTube. Thank you for being with us today. I hope that you found some comfort, some inspiration, perhaps even some enjoyment in our poverty reading session. I received a number of inquiries if there's going to be a part two and if they can join. Yes, there's going to be a part two and the plan is to gather PMAP members from across the Philippines. So those who'd like to join the next poetry reading session and be it in Ilocano or in, you know, in the Ilongo or in other Philippine languages, um, please get in touch with the PMAP secretariat. We'll make the announcement separately. We would like to thank the PMAP professional staff who worked very hard to give birth to this session. You know. We're on a lockdown and co making the coordination and making sure that everybody you know, understands what we're supposed to do. We'd like to say thank you to Beth, to Carol, and to Jeff. We all join you in praying that as the title of our session today says, we all find ourselves tomorrow farther than today. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as your elders in PMAP, we'd like to leave you with some traditional Irish blessings. Our hope is that the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. May you always have walls for the storms. A roof for the rain, he beside the fire. Laughter to cheer you, those you love near you, and all your heart my truly desire. And until, and until we meet again, meet again. Yes. blessings, blessings of, life. of life. Blessings of life. Light without light. Light within. God will hold, hold you in the palm, the palm of, of his hand. We are FEMA past presidents, all 15 of us, saying thank you everyone for joining us. Um, can we have everybody on screen, please? <laughs> so we can wave properly to everybody. Thank you. This is our Thank first team up. We hope you had fun. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank 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 Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye -bye. Everyone. Bye -bye. Stay Bye -bye. safe, everyone. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Be fit, be healthy. God bless. God bless. Bye bye. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.